It's a wonderful privilege for me to be here today. As many of you know, I've been ill and it's just a glorious sight to see all your faces. I'd like to greet Pastor Hendricks, Pastor Harris, Deacon Hill, Missionary Isaac, Deacon Hayden, Deacon Henry, and anyone else I may have neglected to mention, and all of the saints and the whole household of faith in Jesus' name. Now, I just want to share with you something that was ministered to me whilst being somewhat bedridden. Um, sometimes in your most lowest moments, God chooses to lift you up. And I just want to read briefly from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'll read from verse 10 until the end. It says, For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Now, um, I just want to, I'm going to use a few terms I'm going to define very briefly. In our day and age, we have the term celebrity and we have the term star. The term star of old would be someone who was endowed with such a gift that they were kind of set apart from others. Their gift just caused them to shine and to stand out from everybody else. This was something that could not be faked. It was a God-given talent. But now we have another breed of somewhat star, if you have it, called celebrity. These people admit the appearance of shining, yet they themselves really have no talent. They have no God-given thing that sets them apart and causes their face to shine. They are merely people whom, as you see in newspapers, their phot photographs are taken falling out of clubs and somewhat they have fame and notoriety based on nothing, no gift, no talent. That is celebrity. Whereas a star is someone who has a God-given talent that causes them to stand out and gain them notoriety. Now, the epistle to the Corinthians, the second one that we read here, is very emotional. The apostle Paul, as we know from the first epistle, had a lot of trouble with the Corinthian church, a lot of immaturity, and he had to restructure them and cause them to truly understand the way of God. He admonished them. It's a very long epistle with much rebuke, much reproof, and much correction. Now, in the face of this adversity, we find that they had challenged him and taken onto themselves different teachers who were preaching a different message to the gospel that the Apostle Paul brought to them at first. Now, the Apostle Paul is seeking to clarify that he is truly an apostle called of God and he is preaching the right message, compares himself and his ministry to Moses. He recounts Moses' most glorious day in which in Exodus chapter 33 and 34, Moses went to commune with the Lord on the mountain after they had sinned to receive the tables again. And in those 40 days and 40 nights he spent communing with God. The scripture says he didn't eat and he came down with the tablets to renew it. It says he knew not that his face shone. And it says that the people were in such a spiritually dead state that they were afraid to draw nigh to him. 
Though this was the very Moses who'd ministered to them for weeks, for months, for years up until that point, they were afraid to draw nigh unto him. When they first received the covenant on Mount Sinai, God spoke himself. The mountain thundered, lightning. The mountain shook, it burnt, and they were afraid then. But now Moses comes and he, after they had sinned, they were in such a bad state that the very glory, the representation of being with God, they couldn't bear. Now, he came down from the mountain and he realized that they were afraid to draw nigh. And so he would show them the glory on his face so they would know that what he was speaking was God's message. He would be emanating God's glory and then he'd cover it so they would listen to what he would speak. He'd then go back in and speak face to face with the Lord and then come out and do the same process. Now, this was only done because as it says in Deuteronomy 5, verse 29 and 30, God says, oh, that my people had a heart in them to obey my charge, that it be well with their children forever. But their heart was not correct. Moses many times says, circumcise your heart, you stiff-necked people. And now he comes down And they can't handle it because their heart, even after they sinned, was still in such a bad state. Now the Apostle Paul compares himself to this. And he says, Like Moses, my face shines. But the shine on my face is more glorious because I show it and declare it with a boldness and openly. I do not have to veil it because... The spirit of the Lord may lift that very veil on you that you may see. In verse, if I can find it. Okay, in verse 13 it says, Not not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which was abolished. Now, this word end does not mean the termination of a thing. This word end means the goal, the end point, the very focus of what everything is toward. It's the Greek word telos. Now, what he's noticing, the Apostle Paul, as he's studying the story of Moses, is this word for glory that his word, the face, that causes his face to shine is the Hebrew word koran. And this word is not to talk about the substance of light or the substance of the shining it connotes a form of the glory. So on his face, there was a form, and the very root word it comes from connotes a horn. We know in scripture that horn connotes power. Everybody knows this scripture where it says, who have believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? We know who the arm is, it's the very Messiah himself, whom is the arm and the very horn and power of God. So what Moses' face was representing was if they could see the end, the very goal of what he's showing them is the very image of Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul says, I portray this image of Christ with openness and with a boldness. I do not have to veil it. He goes on in chapter four to say, if my gospel is hid, it's because you are blind. The God of this world has blinded you. Now, the Apostle Paul, proving his ministry, goes on to say that in every situation, every single pain he goes through, every single time he fasts, is stoned or faces a shipwreck. He says, proof of my ministry is that my face still shines. Notice it says that the outward man perishes in the next chapter. The outward man perishes, but the inner man grows stronger day by day. This is the very emanation of God. The same way that Christ was the express image of God, the Apostle Paul is saying, as I, his sent messenger, I'm likewise causing you to see God. We all know God is invisible. And now this is very vital why we ourselves must shine. Because God is invisible, the world cannot see him. The world does not have the spirit, it says neither do they know it. And we, who possess such a gift, somewhat, the reason I define celebrity is because we are this. 
We have this God-given gift of the Spirit and the ability to comprehend His truths. So we are celebrities, but there are some of us, no, sorry, we are stars, and there are some of us whom are celebrities, whom are faking, whom have no real substance, but they want their picture taken with the people of God. But they are celebrities, they are not stars. To be a star, you have to make it correct. Now, the Apostle Paul goes on to give another reason why we need our face to shine. He goes on to say in verse 18, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass. By the way, this glass is a mirror. The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, I want you to picture a mirror. Every day, many of us may wake up and look in the mirror to see how we look, to see what sort of damage that sleep may have done to our face. <laughs> or to see the good that sleep has done to our face. Now, when we look in the mirror, we do this daily as a ritual. Notice James says, a hearer of the word and who's not a doer is like a man who looks in the mirror and then forgot what he looked like. The reason why he forgot is because the word showed his imperfection and showed the image and what he's supposed to look like, but he chose not to act. So he must have forgot that he was not matching up. Now, the Apostle Paul says, you with open face must look in the mirror and then you see that you are changed from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now this transformation is vital. We must look into the Word. We must associate with things godly, with things that shine, with things that are glorious, that when we look into it and then look into the mirror, we see the reflection of our face like Moses, like the Apostle Paul, and it changes us from glory to glory, as in it should grow day by day. What does Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18 say? The path of the just... Come on, we all know this verse. The path of the just is like a shining light that... And unto the perfect day. That perfect day is the end when we will be judged according to our works. So I just beseech you in my short words to make sure you are a star and not a celebrity. To make sure that you truly are called of God, that you are truly a gift to your community, truly to a gift to your workplace. Let the Messiah be portrayed. Let your face shine in every circumstance, through good, through bad, through suffering, through joyful times. Let your face shine. Look in that mirror and be changed from glory to glory. These are my few words that I beseech you to take in Jesus' name.